right, in this video we're going to talk about the equation of a plane in three dimensions. So if you think about a plane, I have a little piece of cardboard here we're going to use for a visual aid. Uh, just to think about a plane in three dimensions. So the plane would extend forever in all directions. This would just be a piece of the plane. And uh, so there are some things that you would need to know to locate that plane in space. And so one of them would be uh, at least one point on the plane. So that would fix a location for where the plane is. So you need to know at least one point on the plane. All right, so I'm going to put just a point here on my piece of cardboard, and we're going to think about that as fixing a location for the plane in space. And then once you've fixed that location, uh, the other thing that you need to think about is a direction, because there are really infinitely many different ways I could hold this cardboard that would still be going through that same point. Those would all be different planes through that same point. So I need something that fixes a direction. And so we know that vectors are something we can use in R3 to fix a direction. All right, let me go ahead and write down over here, though. One important thing you need to know is any point on the plane. And so I'm going to denote that x0, y0, z0. It's a fixed point on the plane. And then I want to think about a vector, which will give me direction. So I have a little visual aid here to think about a vector. Um, so sometimes students want to think about using a vector that is in the plane to fix the direction. But I want to just kind of illustrate with this why that wouldn't necessarily be enough. So if I think about my plane here, and I've got a point labeled on my plane, and I think about a vector that is in the plane, notice that I can pivot this piece of cardboard all around that vector that I'm holding there. And so those are all different planes that contain that particular point and contain that particular vector. So what I really need is something that's going to keep me from being able to pivot this plane around that vector. So one way I could get that is with another vector in the plane, or even easier, if I could get a vector that is perpendicular to that plane. Now, once I've established a vector perpendicular to this plane, I can't rotate this cardboard around anymore and keep it perpendicular to this vector that I have here and still contain this point that I have. So uh, those are the two basic things that you need in order to write the equation of a plane, any point that's on the plane, and then a vector that's perpendicular to the plane. I'm going to use normal for the word perpendicular as a synonym for the word perpendicular. Uh, so I need a vector normal to the plane. And I'm going to use n for normal. And this is any point on the plane. All right, so geometrically, we've thought about the kinds of things we need to know to write the equation of a plane. But then we want to kind of think about how to translate those ideas into an equation. And so one important idea here that we've hit upon a few different times is this idea of normal or perpendicular involves a relationship where you would have a dot product that is 0. So if I think about my plane and I think about that vector that's perpendicular to the plane, basically what I want is not only uh, the plane to be perpendicular to that vector, but that all vectors in this plane would be perpendicular to that vector. So if I think about just all the other points that would be wherever on the plane, and I think about all the different vectors that would be between my point x0, y0, z0, and any other point on the plane, I end up with lots and lots and lots of different vectors all in the plane. And the idea is that all of those vectors would be perpendicular to this normal vector. So they would all have a dot product that is 0 with that normal vector. So in order to remember how to write the equation of a plane, that is what I think about. And I don't take all that time to think about it. I just think about this idea of a normal vector and then all the vectors in the plane, and that those should be orthogonal so that they have a dot product that is 0. All right, so if I write that down here in terms of an equation, I've got a dot product that's 0. And so one of the vectors in the dot product would be this normal vector. 
and then the other vector in the dot product would represent all those vectors that are in the plane that I drew here. And so if you think about that, I've got this point x naught, y naught, z naught, and then all of these other points, x, y, z, many, many different x, y, z points that are in that plane. And what I want to represent is those vectors that are in that plane. And so I can represent all of those vectors by just using x, y, z as my variables, my unknown. And then if I want a vector from a point, from x naught, y naught, z naught, as I drew here, to another point, x, y, z, we know how to do that. The components are just the change in x, change in y, and change in z. So I would have um, x minus x naught, where the x would be the coordinate of one of these other points here. So many, many different things, not a specific x here. My x naught would be the x coordinate of my established point on the plane. And then in the y, y minus y naught, and then in the z direction, z minus z naught. And again, the key thing is that that dot product should equal zero. All right, so this is often how I think about writing the equation of a plane in R3, and you're welcome to use this form. If you look in your textbook or many other textbooks, this is not the form that they will have in a box with a, a label that says equation of a plane. Essentially, all they will have done, though, is expand this dot product out. Go ahead and compute this dot product on the left side. So I take the first component in this first vector times the first component in the second vector plus second component times second component plus n3 times z minus z naught and then all of that equal to zero. A lot of times if students forget something on this equation, it's that they forget equal zero on the other side. But that idea, again, remembering about the vector that's perpendicular to all the other vectors in the plane, so that you have a dot product that's zero, should help you remember equal zero on the other side. All right, so this is what you'll see in your textbook, or any textbook probably, uh, although sometimes they use slightly different letters to denote the vector or the point. Uh, but this is the form for an equation of a plane that you're going to want to use uh, any time you're wanting to find the equation of a plane. Um, all right, so we're going to look at some examples finding equations of planes in different scenarios in the next couple of videos.